This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I want to talk about lookup tables and volumetric efficiency, or what's commonly referred to in the industry as VE, or fuel map. This is a basic lookup table. It's very commonly used in the EFI world. Basically what it is, is on the left side, you have some sort of load. On the bottom, you typically have RPM. Load can be manifold absolute pressure, most commonly measured in kilopascals or KPA, running from about near vacuum or about 20% air up to 100 KPA on a normally aspirated motor. This would be full throttle, and this would be like in a downshift. Along the bottom, we run RPM from somewhat under idle. This is 500 RPM up through 7,500 RPM in the bottom right corner. We use these anytime we can't easily create a formula to model something. So in this case, we'd have a 60 kPa and 2,000 RPM go vertical on the 2,000 column, horizontally on the 60 column, and what we get is 69. This is a number that we probably started with a default number from a default tune, but then tuned in on a dyno. The red dot would be 800 RPM and 40 kPa, a typical idle location in the volumetric efficiency map. On the bottom, the purple dot might be where you are in a downshift. The yellow dot is 100 or close to 100 kPa in the intake and 7,000 RPM. So this would be the full throttle area. What happens when you get a number that's right on the intersection is the code would take the addition of all four of these numbers. And if it's right in the center of the intersection, it would evenly take the four numbers, add them together, divide by four, and we get an average of about 90. If the dot is somewhat closer to say the 92.8, we put a bigger weighting on that number, but, but these other numbers come into effect. We use these tables, these lookup tables for all sorts of things. This one happens to be the VE table, but we could have the engine ignition timing in the center or possibly a number used for a boost control algorithm. Let's talk about volumetric efficiency. What is it? By definition, if a motor is a one liter single cylinder motor, every time the piston goes up or down, it displaces one liter of air in the combustion chamber. In green, I've got drawn one liter of air in the intake. At full throttle or rest, that would be 100% air, but at idle, it would be quite a bit of a vacuum in the intake as measured by the TPS, the MAP, and the manifold air temperature, and we can calculate the air density quite effectively in the code. In theory, if the piston comes down one liter, this entire liter of air would be sucked into the combustion chamber for the next compression and power stroke. But in reality, it doesn't quite work out that way. So now, let's talk about the exhaust stroke. Every time the piston comes up, you have an open exhaust valve, and the majority of that exhaust heads down the exhaust system. But notice the piston, it's impossible to fully evacuate all of the exhaust out of the combustion chamber. We physically can't run the clearances that tight in the chamber, nor would you want to. Also notice at the top of the exhaust stroke, both the intake and exhaust valves are open to some degree you will get some mixing of the exhaust into the intake manifold. You will also have a problem with momentum of this exhaust column going down the exhaust system. How effectively does it evacuate this left behind exhaust? So now, I've got the piston drawn at bottom dead center, right before all the air that has made it into the combustion chamber is about to be compressed. Notice that we have the yellow is one liter of charge in the intake. The green one is the second one back. And 
The last one that got pulled into the combustion chamber, a little bit didn't quite make it in for whatever reason. Also notice it's possible, here's your exhaust heading down the exhaust system. That has momentum associated with it. And sure enough, it's pulled a little bit of the charge out of the combustion chamber from the momentum before the exhaust valve closed. We also have, to some degree, resistance and airflow from the throttle position is almost closed. It's pretty tough to get air to move in that little slot that we have left. And also, the intake valve is somewhat in the way. All this stuff complicates us getting to 100% volumetric efficiency. It's this combination of all these things going on that makes it very difficult to calculate. We simply don't have a sensor that can calculate all of this stuff. But what we do have, luckily, is the O2 wideband sensor in the exhaust system so that we can verify what was the mixture in the combustion chamber after we burned it how much oxygen is left in it. We presume that if there is oxygen left, we ran out of fuel before we ran out of oxygen. On the rich side, what we're doing is measuring the unburned hydrocarbons in the exhaust and trying to approximate what the wideband sensor was picking up for an air fuel ratio. If you happen to have all your stars aligned perfectly, what would happen is, Exactly one gulp of liter of air got pulled out of the intake manifold. It would almost always happen at full throttle so that this restriction isn't happening at the throttle position sensor. And exactly one exhaust power stroke worth of exhaust ended up in the exhaust system and you didn't pull out any extra fuel out of the combustion chamber. So 100% of what you thought you were going to get all gets compressed and burned. It turns out this happens pretty much only at the torque peak of the motor at full throttle, and we'll get into this later. It's impossible to design the perfect exhaust system and the perfect intake to make all this happen as desired at every RPM and throttle position. So now, let's assume that at some point in the power band, we were at 60 kPa, or about 60% air, in the intake manifold between the intake valve and the throttle position sensor. We're at 2,000 RPM, as measured by the crankshaft position sensors. And we want a 14.7 target AFR in our target AFR table. And we find out on the dyno or from testing and looking at data logs that it takes a 69 in the VE table that we talked about earlier to get to the 14.7 AFR that we're looking for. This is our same VE table we talked about earlier. Here's the 60 kPa, the 2000 RPM, and we get the 69 that we developed from testing. What we're doing with tuning is developing this curve that we most reliably hit our target AFR as verified by the O2 sensor in the exhaust system. On the right side, what I have is a three-dimensional view. This is exactly the same table as on the left. The only thing is we've just shown it in a three-dimensional way. Very common on almost all these tuning softwares are sliders where we can zoom in the scale or rotate any direction we want. This is a VE table off of a MoTeC. It is exactly the same thing though. This motor happens to go from about 20 kPa or 20% air to 185 kPa or almost two atmospheres of air in the intake manifold. Horizontally, we've got RPM. As we zoom in and out, we can go to the left side, right side, up or down. On the right, you're seeing that same sort of three-dimensional table. This just happens to be Motex version of the representation. Now we're looking at a TPS-based system off of a Harley-Davidson. Again, this is just yet another lookup table. It happens to have the RPM on the left side. Across the top is throttle position. If you notice before, we had the second load at the bottom, but it's all the same thing. It's just a lookup table. 
So for example, at 1750 RPM and 25% throttle, we get a volumetric efficiency of 75. The other thing to notice is in the 3D representation, look how this looks like a very rocky topical map uh, that you might see from the Rocky Mountains or something. We have peaks and valleys. What that is is a Harley Davidson being a shared or Y-type intake manifold. You get lots of stealing from the cylinder one to cylinder two. So what we end up having is violent changes in the VE table as we're trying to balance out the mixture from the front cylinder to the rear cylinder. Normally, anything that looks like this sort of peaks and valleys is an indication you have a problem. Most DE maps on most motors are a very gradual curve. This is what I like to call the signature of a motor or possibly the footprint of a motor. What I've got is that same motor we were looking at, the MoTeC, where your KPA map runs from about 31 up to 180 KPA on the left. On the bottom is RPM running from about 1500 RPM up through about 8500 RPM. This area right here is your idle area. And in this particular motor, it idles at about 1800 RPM and about 60 KPA. If I stab the throttle, you'll jump to just under 100 KPA or atmospheric pressure. And then as the motor accelerates, this line right here is where the motor accelerates. It notices it's being a centrifugal compressor on this motor. There's a very distinct curve that you just cannot get above. This happens to be a view that I can pull from Mega Log Viewer HD. It is the histogram view. What this is doing is grouping everything together in boxes where the boxes are possibly my tuning breakpoints in the tuning software. I can change this to any size table. I've made it 16 by 16 for convenience. What I've chosen is make the color hit weight. That is where I spend the most time based on those number of yellow dots we had in the previous screenshot. And notice how it's fairly tough to get out of this envelope, but most of your driving happens within this blue line, which is the same as the previous screenshot right here is the orange line. It's exactly the same thing. By the way, if you notice down at the bottom, I am showing engine speed on the horizontal. I'm showing manif inlet manifold pressure, the same as KPA. And out in the center is the volumetric efficiency. The other thing to notice is I didn't actually count these boxes, but it is about half of the cells that you really use out of the table. You can't physically get here with this motor and you can't in a downshift get to 9,000 RPM and 30 KPA. It just simply will never get there. So I would like to take a moment to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD. And please remember to hit subscribe in the bottom of my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.